Vittorio Bissaro, Flight Tremor, um, Bordona Rosa. Vito, seemed like another productive day with some waves at the end as well. Can you break down the day for us? Yeah, it was a very interesting day. Here in Cagliari, we, have not, we don't have many opportunities to face the waves during winter. So this, one, this day was one of the few. So it was super interesting to go out and uh, you know, try always uh, to learn uh, something, little tricks, and as you said, uh, super productive. Yeah, it seems like Chase 3 was engaging and some uh, upwind and downwind legs. Is that something to put pressure on you guys on board? or? Yeah, exactly. It's something to put pressure, to develop communication, to start talking about uh, someone else in the race course. So for sure, it's not as uh, have another boat around because uh, often they were uh, cheating, going higher than the normal boat. But apart from that, uh, uh, yeah, it's uh, just to put pressure and keep the, the game tight. Looking at the A75 arriving perhaps in the first week of April, how radical would you say will the hull design be compared to the LQ12? Well, for sure it's uh, very aggressive, very, very nice boat, super clean, very nice solution. Uh, LAQ was a development boat, so the intention was, was not to make the best boat, it was just a nice platform to study, while uh, the AC-75 is clearly a weapon. Every, we look at every details, every second around in everything, in on the package, and uh, really looking forward to start, to start a sitting with it. In terms of uh, recon, uh, are you looking at something in particular from the other teams right now at the moment? Well, I was very curious about uh, the latest uh, true foil by the Kiwis. And uh, yeah, we just uh, try to, to watch uh, properly every picture to see if they, w which kind of solution they, they decided to put into these foils. But uh, uh, let's say we, we are confident on our process on our decision so it was just, there are a few things that uh, still we didn't realize completely didn't understand completely but again we are pretty confident in our decision and happy with uh, every choice we made on pre-starts you seem to run precise drills in a starting box uh, do you think how much can you learn from that uh, watching the other teams uh, doing two ball testing is that something you can check as well or? Well, let's say that uh, with these uh, Chubot uh, sessions we started doing here in Cagliari, we, our learning curve was so steep. We learned so many things about the uh, press start drills and communication. We, we developed the boats and all the package uh, for kind of two years, almost two years. And it was uh, really a pleasure to, to start uh, putting the beast into the, the arena. So yeah, big learning in the last uh, month. and. Uh, Again, every day is a ni nice opportunity to keep the, the curve uh, going higher. Vito, ci lascio un commento per i supporters, Luna Rossa. Forza ragazzi, siamo fortissimi. We're here with Brian Mitchell, trimmer out of Lingi Red Bull Racing. Your fifth consecutive day of sailing here in Jeddah. How was the sailing day? 
Are uh, you tired? Yeah, a bit tired, but we had a nice breeze today, a bit stronger than uh, expected, so between 9 and uh, 12 knots. And we had a nice uh, setting. It was difficult, but nice. Yeah, the, the, this first week has seen some lighter winds in the last trip out. Uh, you, you've made use of that testing, the J3 jibs in the lower range. What's the lightest wind you'd consider sailing the J3 in? Uh, I think we saw the, the last two days that uh, between J2 and J3, it's really close uh, Yeah, until 10 knots. Then uh, when it's getting a bit stronger, you're better with the J3. Below that, it's perhaps a bit better with the, the J2. Yeah, you, as you said, you, you tested the J3 and the J2. You tested them at the same time. Uh, how did that go? What, what were the differences? Well, I think straight line looks pretty close and uh, makes a difference a bit on maneuver. But we're still learning uh, which sail is best uh, compared to the wind. It looked like upwind there wasn't much of a difference, but downwind maybe that was a bit more clear. The difference of the J2 was a bit faster downwind. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I think with the, the extra upper and wind speed upwind, you're really happy with a, a small small jib at the front and downwind you have less uh, upper and wind speed, so bigger area make the make the difference. Did you have a problem with the FCS in the first race today? Mac, maybe I hope you remember, but Max was laughing laughing you up from leeward. You put the board down, but didn't manage the maneuver. You just lost flight. Can you tell us what happened? No, uh, we uh, we lost the rudder in this one. I think we was too much loaded with the, the main. Yeah, the main too too trim, traveler too high, and we lost the rudder. So when it comes to scaling up the sails uh, to the AC75, you've got three jibs on the AC40. Um, how do you how do you scale up and wh how do you make your decisions on the on the margin on the crossover conditions? For example, today you're using the J3. Yeah, I think the it's the, the work we start doing now on the 40 by uh, setting with different jib on the, the the 240 and try to find uh, yeah where are the limit where it's positive to have a bigger or smaller smaller sail and we start this work uh, now. And towards the end of the session at the last stint, the helms and trimmers swapped for the last stint. Uh, you both nose dive spectacularly. Was it you at the helm? Uh, yeah, I had the chance to helm for uh, yeah, 20 minutes at the end. It was really interesting. I wasn't helming when we <laughs> did the, the nose dive, but I, find, I think it was good fun for the, the whole crew to, uh, yeah, to be able to swap and to, uh, to share our uh, feeling and experience. So how does the responsibility between the helm and trimmer differ in the you know, different stages of the race? Ah, do you, uh, it's pretty much always the same. You have to, uh, to yeah, play the, the flight setting and it's really interesting. You uh, also have a stronger feeling of the board by uh, helming it. So it, for me, it was really interesting. Do you think it's important for the helms to be trimming sometimes? I think it's always good to, uh, to be able to swap and uh, yeah, share the feeling. Uh, do you think it was the trimmer's fault today in the nose dives? I think it's uh, much, <laughs> much harder to trim than to, uh, to helm. So yeah, I think both time was a uh, trimmer uh, mistake. Do you think you'll be doing that again? Was there any damage? Oh, I hope so. We'll see. Uh, I think it's also uh, depending on the breeze. You can't do that in uh, 20 knots, so we'll see what's uh, coming next. Three, two, one, start. That's back out. You know, Maxi starting to leave it. I know I need to start to move on the black boat. Start. Let's start that time. Uh, Pete Berlin, day 65 on the LEQ12 in the Haruki Golf. Um, pretty bottom end conditions today. How's it feeling? Yeah, it was really nice day out there today. Um, it's been kind of a nice way to cap off a week. It was looking obviously quite light, light for a while. We thought there's going to be a little bit more breeze early on, so we put the boat in the water, had that, that little hold um, just to wait for the breeze to actually fill in, and then you know, it stayed around that bottom end all day, which was you know, pretty, pretty perfect for what we were trying to get out of the day. Really? Um, I noticed you were trying to. Kind of different heel angles, tack to tack. Is that 
particular or just playing with both? Uh, yeah, we're just playing with bits and pieces, seeing what we think works best, um, you know, trying a hope of things, the manoeuvres and the takeoffs and bits and pieces. So, yeah, just kind of pushing through the, the development list. Um, how do you think the bottom end will compare in this versus the big boat? Um, yeah, I think they both go down the wind range really well. Um, obviously, that light air, uh, when you get a few wind shadows around, you, you need to be pretty good uh, in the bottom end. But yeah, I think compared to what we saw in the last America's Cup, you know, both the boats are taking a huge step at that bottom end of the wind range. So you know, I should make some pretty good action in the light air and, um, if, it, if it is that way in Barcelona. Um, I noticed, like, obviously you're doing a lot of trim changes and stuff to try and keep it flying in the, in the lighter end, in the lighter wind. Currently using the batteries. Do you think the trim decisions will change as you go to as you cycle? Yeah, well, it's, it's obviously a different dynamic when you um, get manual power back on the boat uh, compared to the battery power we have um, yeah, available now, the LEQ. Um, but yeah, we, we try and use a similar philosophy, um, try and not kind of trick ourselves too much into going a bit of false uh, falseism in terms of how much you can do. But yeah, it's going to be obviously a huge part of the, the campaign is figuring out how you how you use that power really well, um, you know, not just in the light air, but right across the, across the wind range.